be a bit like this. Yeah, just pick my legs up behind my head sometimes. Yes, I'm, I'm so flexible that I get stiff very easily from just sitting around in a chair. Hi, I'm Salem Fox. I'm 14 and I'm very passionate about dance, especially ballet, and I best bird to sit down. When I was free, I was let into a dance class and yes, I've been hooked on it ever since. One aspect I like about dance as well is almost the technicality of it and the discipline. Well, it's this feeling of doing it, feeling going through the moves and it's just an amazing feeling. My daily practice can often just be going through some of the exercises I'm going to do for my exam. So I've got a um, competition coming up in Auckland in three weeks. Some days you might just feel like going to bed but, and staying in bed, but I'd like to have a career in um, ballet as a professional dancer. Dancer. I'd like to be, say, with a ballet company, either the Wee New Zealand Ballet or, say, something overseas, or especially I'd eventually love to be a principal dancer. I like being in my bedroom because it's sort of my my place really. It's got all my stuff that I really like, my um, all my books, yes, like, yes, all my books, all my um, whatever I like to play with. Come on and have a look at where my moss is. <laughs> see, I've got a lot here. <laughs> this is Funara hydrometer moss. As you can see, these are its spore capsules. That's actually a succulent but yet it's growing in damp. Oh. Yeah. Salem's life is very busy. He has several classes a week, plus then ev nearly every day, six days a week, he's practising. Oh. It's a good discipline for him. It's, he, he thrives on it. talk about Asperger's. So many people in the world that just don't understand what it really is. Sometimes they can't exact, sometimes they can be um, not, uh, got it in my head, it just won't come out. <laughs> I knew Salem was different very early on, right from the start. He didn't communicate. His communication was hitting and screaming. He didn't really walk for quite a while. So he would use his fingers a lot and with a toy car, he'd turn it over and he'd just play with the wheels and just see the wheels go round. He just wouldn't know what to do. He'd just be mesmerised by the wheels. He started dancing before he was three, which was a huge help. The discipline really helped him and being you know, you had to do certain things, and he really liked that. I don't tend to tell people that I have Asperger's. It's just, it often isn't perceived too warmly by people. I say think of it as a disorder or something. It can actually have benefits to it. If I didn't have Asperger's, I could have possibly not even had my obsession with ballet.
three and four and five and six and seven and two and three and four and chain eight. One, two, three, four. Now step into pose A. To be a professional dancer of any sort, not just ballet, you have to really have a good mental attitude. You have to have a strong mind so that you work hard. Um, I think Salem has got that strong mind. Sometimes it's difficult for him, simply because he wants to be the best. Pour de bras forward, lengthening the spine, and up, and down with the arms. Just easily. Da, da, da. I have often thought that Asperger's does help say with his dance and his way of looking at dance and especially choreography. Because I had the suspicion that he pictured the movements in his head rather than using his body to do the movement beforehand. To demi plie single. Up. Good. Controlling that nicely. Now doubles. To fourth again and pirouette. Dip. Now what you did there was dip. Don't dip. You're going down into your hips there. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just from there, take it out. Da dum. And there. Straight up. I tend to take things in black and white, but many people seem to seem to um, speak and, and um, explain things more in the greys, and I genuinely don't understand what they have, and often I have to get them to translate them. Like, square up your shoulders and stuff. What does that mean? <laughs> but obviously all it meant was simply, um, instead of having your shoulders like off an angle or something, have them square. Why don't I just simply say, make sure your body or shoulders are um, facing directly to the front. <laughs> Very simple. Did you hurt your foot? Yeah. Yep. You um, had too much resistance in my face. Right, okay, well just shake it and we'll get you. Because I was playing very well. I've rearranged some of the steps to um to suit me better. It's um it's it's very neat choreography. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> mm, that's alright. Okay, just breathe. Yeah, no, I can do the dancing and not the talking. Well, that wasn't too bad. Shall we do it now with doubles? Yeah. Do you feel up to doubles? I can get disappointed in myself. A lot of dancers are perfectionists and we really get so caught up in the technique and what's what we've done wrong that we don't really focus on what's what's um what we've how well and what things have gone right. One, two, three. Okay. Now that was three in a swizzle. So we'll stick to three. One, two. Now you're pushing yourself over that way. One bar, that was better. See, you got round twice because you used less ferociousness. So sometimes he does get very annoyed with himself when he can't do the steps. But what he forgets is he's what, 14 now. He's still a very young person. There's no way his body could do the steps as brilliantly as he wants to yet. He's got all that possibility, but it will come gradually over the years. Got plenty of time. Oh, oh. Good. That was beautiful. Down and up. That was the best one yet. They're just so, they're such lovely cre creatures. You, 
especially when you manage to tame them and they're almost more tame than cats actually. <laughs> A lot of autistic and Asperger's children don't have empathy, but being around animals have been a big thing in his life. He's always been around cats. We used to have bunnies and guinea pigs, but they all sort of die off with old age. <laughs> I really like gardening. This garden, I started it a few years ago, and as you can see, um, there have been plenty of times when I haven't weeded it properly. <laughs> oh, all these weeds. A lot to do, isn't there? Yeah. <sighs> I just, I really hate, hate sun, sunlight, bright sunlight and um, all of that because especially with Asperger's syndrome, generally the sensitivity to the heat and the brightness because it's so glary for me, especially if I go out here, you get all of this glare. It's very unpleasant and hot, and it's like, ugh. Like, I have had a few people that have been unkind to me. Yes, I, I, like, I used to be called um, retard and all of that. He did get bullied because he was different. He had a real thing about germs, and if people put his pencils in their mouths and stuff like that, he'd just go off his nut. You know, he couldn't cope. He couldn't cope with that at all. Often the teachers wouldn't even listen to listen to um, what I had to say. I'd often try to take matters into my own hands and then the bullies would tell on me and then I'd be taken as a bully. <laughs> yes, I was, I, was, I was probably the most punished person in my entire class. Now, this is my favourite botany book. This is almost what I've called the botanical gut, but my botanical bible. This is what really started my full interest in um, scientific botany. Now, let me see. Yes, this is a, this will, this is a, was printed around about 1923, I think, and yes, it's got sort of diagrams in it. One thing I love about homeschooling is the fact that you can sort of study other subjects. It comes under unschooling, and it's um, you just go with what you know the child is interested in, and and you just really go with it. There are a whole bunch of mosses. Yeah, I've got these mosses around here. I actually get these. Are, this is pretty neat. Cause this moss actually looks like a fan. This is a humongous moss. You don't find mosses this big that often. Mosses are actually more related to the general land plant plants like trees and um yeah the angiosperms and gymnosperms yeah. I really like delving into deeply into something you know it's just like scratching the surface isn't enough for me you know if I've got the books in front of me and everything I'll be like oh look through that look through that and um yes yeah, you get really interested and fascinated into it and before you know you can really um. Yeah, get so engrossed in it that you should be have to be called out. <laughs> he makes his own breakfast, he makes his own sandwiches. He's learning to fill his lunchbox with as much food as possible because he does need to eat a lot. He's travelling to his classes by himself now, which is great. It gives him some independence and makes him feel a bit more grown up. You got something warm for tonight? Yes. Okay. Two things to pack. All right, we'll see you later. <laughs> see you, man. <laughs> Off you go. Yeah. See you. Having a child with Asperger's, you sort of get into all these routines where they're comfortable. But I didn't really think that's not how you really live in the world. And also being a dancer, in his career, he's going to have to travel. He's always going to be in new situations. And of course, if he was just in his little safe environment, he couldn't do that. He needs to be challenged. And meeting new people, um, 
and being in different situations is a challenge for him. But he's slow, as he matures, he's coping with it better. And I've been going up to Waikana and all of that a lot more often. It's been a big thing for um, the confidence. Yeah, Mum can sometimes help me not get stressed in situations when I'm alone. Like, um, like it's when I started um travelling out to Waikana by myself, my um, my mum mum would often write instructions just in case say something didn't go to plan or something. I'm not exactly very good at um, sometimes you know improvisation. Like, what if I miss a bus or some, something when I'm by myself? What do I do if it's like you know another bus will take a long time? Salem tends to have what we call meltdowns. It's when he can't cope with something and things aren't going quite right for him. Ma? The train's late. Not what? I'll be late for my lesson. I won't be able to get bus in time, Mum. Yeah. Okay, Ma. Sure it'll be right. Doesn't seem like it. Oh god, oh god, oh god, okay. teaching a grade one class. It's really fun doing the exercises with them and often making up warm-ups for them. You know, they really enjoy, especially some days we decide to put in a funny warm-up because often, especially with little kids, ballet warm-ups don't necessarily have to be all about the technical ballet. Sometimes they can just be a bit of fun, really. He speaks at an adult level, but he is also able to explain things simple, very simple, and he also gives examples of what not to do, which is the kids love. One thing I've got to remember in ballet, some people say, um, you know, things like jazz and acrobatics are, you know, and lyrical and more flowing, and ballet stiff, it's not. You may say, look, control, but you're actually still, you're, um, you're fluid and you're relaxed. You're not, you're not like stiff positions, positions, you're more positions, so yes. Relevés. Just about to head up to Auckland for the annual um, British Theatre Dance Association Festival. We're just looking at tidying up a few little things, so just our placement of our feet at the front and the back. So just tiny little tweaks. Just back a little bit. Um, what do you mean? As in, yeah. as in you were forward. You yeah. just want to put it. Yeah, saying, I was going to say, as in, is my foot going back or do you want me to go back? I want your toe back more. Yeah. It's just coming forward, it's coming here. And you want it back just a wee bit. No, no, come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? No, no. Yeah, just take it over back there. That, that's He's obviously very dedicated to what he wants to do, which actually makes my job really easy. So if you ask him to do something, 
he immediately tries to make it perfect first time. So that's why he was really hard on himself. swimming I come here every week. Sometimes when you're just swimming heaps and heaps you really just forget what's happening around outside. <laughs> Costumes are very important as part of the dance. A lot of the costumes that he had before, I'd made them to fit him. And of course he'd had such a growth, big growth spurt that even the allowances I'd left to be able to let out, there was no way. <laughs> so it's, yeah, constant sewing, constant repairing. These were normal boots which I have made into Dancing boots. Um, it was going to cost us well over six hundred dollars for a pair of character boots for Salem. So I thought, um, no, I can't afford that. That's incredibly expensive. Luckily, we've had scholarship from Variety, the children's charity, and Salem has just got it for the third year. Um, without it. I don't know what we'd have done. Salem's blog, it's Ballet Boy New Zealand. We have got an amazing amount of readers. Um, it's also the, the London um, Boys Ballet School has put it on their resource list as a blog for the boys to read, as yeah, a, a ballet boy's journey, eh? Yeah. excited about the idea of going up to Auckland because it's just it will be such an amazing experience in some ways you want to see new people and you um you want to dance in new theatres and everything so every theatre is different to dancing. He was going to go to Auckland by himself with the performance troupe, but the pressure's got to him for a lot of reasons. So he did ask me the other day if I'd go up. What made me ask my mum to come along with me to Auckland was there are many things that could have happened while I was away. Mm -hmm. What if I couldn't put on one of my costumes? What if I've forgotten something or something like that? And I could really get myself worried and stuff, and that could really affect my performance on the stage. Oh, just manage your best. The talent of the kids shows me what they're capable of doing. Each child has a report written for them. I have a writer sitting beside me and they write a report detailing down some of the things I see that uh, gives them some inspiration and maybe some um, critical things that they need to pay attention to as well. Boys are 
finding it maybe a little easier these days than I did in my childhood, uh, but still they're faced with those same things. There are the bullies at school that see them as being something that's way different from the norm. They're not playing rugby, uh, they're, they're not racing cars, they're spending time in the studio. The boys will tease them about being a little bit feminine. I know that I got that, but there's always a quick whip back, and that's the fact you're spending all this fantastic time with the girls, meanwhile they're playing rugby in the mud with the blokes. One big problem with competitions is so much waiting around. It's just like, it's just like, um, you, you do a dance and then there's this humongous long wait before you actually do your next dance. got be getting him ready to go overseas because he'll have to go over by himself and new people to perform to which he loves he's a performer he loves to perform he's got a lot of talent there a lot of potential to do really really well and maybe move that towards a career if that's what he chooses to do There's so much satisfaction, you do your dance really well and then you suddenly get a whole bunch of applause from the audience. It's almost enough to make up for all of the effort you've been doing with the dancing.